Greetings, everyone. This is Jim Delapine, and I'll be doing some step-by-step -step tutorials for you in Photoshop CS6. We'll create this flower text effect in Photoshop. This tutorial will cover some simple blending mode effects, quick mask, a motion blur, and the use of layer masks. This is actually an adapted tutorial that I got from PSD Tuts, and I've simplified it quite a bit and adapted it with my own techniques that I think will benefit you. So let's get started. The first thing I did was created a document that was 1900 by 1200 pixels in size. I started out by creating this radial gradient that you see with, with a foreground color of 61, 143, 40 and the uh, lighter area being 168, 189, 64 as you see here. So I created this simple radial gradient and then what I did was I went to bitbox.com and got these uh, assorted textures that I downloaded that are high resolution to work with and you'll see as we go along here that I'll be using these textures to give the background some kind of a distressed look. For this image, I wanted to create this textured background. Let's get back here and start from this point here. What I did was I created my gradient background and I went in and I downloaded my images. We'll copy and paste into each so that they all come in on their own individual layers. So then what I did was I also desaturated each of the images to the U saturation area and desaturated to remove all color. And I will continue to do that for each layer. Control U, desaturate, will remove all color, and we will begin from here. So the first thing I'm going to do is take each layer and set the blending mode to overlay. Okay, you can see an immediate f effect. It's reacting to the underlying layer. And I will also reduce the opacity of that layer. And for a variety of techniques and a, a different look, I'm going to combine the textures and lower the opacity of each one. And I'll go in and do the same or something similar to each layer. So if I zoom in here, I can see that I've got a nice texture going on here. I'll duplicate the background layer. I'm going to select that layer, hit Control J, and drag that layer to the top of the textures. And I will also knock back the opacity to approximately 40%. This will soften things a bit, and I'll bring this down to overlay. So this is before I brought the copied layer to the top of the stacking order, and this is after. So now what I did was I created a new layer on top of those layers and with a large soft black brush I added some black to the edges and the result is what you see here. I then put that layer into overlay and reduced the opacity of that to about 35 percent or so. Okay so now we have a nice background. I downloaded a nice image of some flowers that I then copied and pasted into my final document and then resize. So I'm hitting Control T and once you have your bounding box outside of the window documents area and you want to see the entire box if you hit Control 0 that will fit the document into the viewing area and it will allow you to resize. And then The next step is to set some type. Again I've done this ahead of time so let me hide the flowers layer and the type I came up with was this text here, flowers, and what I'm going to do is use this basically as a template to fit the flowers within. I'm going to knock back the opacity of the flowers layer to 35, 30% or so. Now what I need to do is calculate the flowers and look what's appropriate size-wise. I'm going to scale this once again uh, now the next step is, again, I want to look at the flowers and um, I want to size them and make sure that they look correct within this area here. So I'm actually going to duplicate the flowers and that looks fine. 
All right, so they're each on different layers. Let me merge these down, control E, E. And so now they're all in one layer. And I'm just going to kind of set them up so I have a little bit of overlapping. So now you need to do a little bit of planning. The next step is to work with layer masks. With the text layer and active selection, I'm going to create a layer mask. So with that selection active, I'm going to click on the layer mask icon. And now that I have my layer mask, this part is a bit tedious, but this work will help you give a, the realistic illusion of the text being truly created from these flowers. So you'll need to use your paintbrush to actually paint on the layer mask to reveal the flowers that overlapped beyond the text. So what I did was this. I went in, selected my paintbrush, and I selected a size that was appropriate and increased my hardness to about 90% uh, or so. And with white as my foreground color, I'm going to go in and start revealing the flowers below. So I'm going to go in and just start to paint in the flowers beyond the text edges with the idea in mind that I want to create the illusion that, that this text is made out of flowers. What I'm going to do is swap my foreground and background colors and then a little more carefully go in and start to form these flowers here and being selective. Okay, so we've got the start of something here. Now, the next thing I want to do is this. I need some extra flowers to cover up a lot of these bare spots in here. All right. I want a lot of these pink flowers to be covering to actually make the characters more readable. So what I've done is this. I'm going to go into Quick Mask. I'm actually going to select a flower that is very generic and I'm going to start to paint over it to create a selection out of it. So in Quick Mask I'm painting to create a selection. All right, I'll now exit Quick Mask, hitting Q or clicking on the Quick Mask icon once again. So what I have here is a single flower that is selected. And now I'm going to hit Control J to copy what was in that selection to the layer above. So I now have a single flower and that's fine. Now what I'm going to do is this, use that particular flower here, all right, this flower, to copy over certain areas of the text all right, and fill in. And this way I have more control around forming the characters. So once I've placed this one flower in place that I'm happy with, I'm going to hold down my Alt key and duplicate that to another area. Notice it automatically creates a new layer, which gives me more control. And it also allows me to hit Control T to free transform that to give it variety of shapes. I can reduce the size. I can scale it up or down. So I'm going to Alt click, duplicate that again, and just fill in a lot of areas that would help in the readability later on. Okay, so this is the kind of effect I want. You can see that I've, I've duplicated that one single flower one, two, three, four times. And what I'll do to keep myself organized is I'm going to merge these all down together. Once I'm happy with the placement and the scaling, so I'll hit Control E, 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 E so that they're all now on one layer, which means that a little more manageable. With that process, I'm going to jump ahead now, and I'm going to proceed to completed look. Okay, so this is what, after all that work is done, this is what I've come up with. However, I also did something else here. So this is the end result. So I started out here, and my end result will be this. After this step, what we want to do is consolidate everything. All right, so I've got all these extra flowers here, those areas there. I've got that on its own layer. Once I'm happy with my results, I'm going to hide the white text. And knowing that I need to get some contrast in between the flowers in the background, what I've done is I've taken this layer with all the extra flowers and merged it down into this layer here. And what that will do is now consolidate that layer mask and apply that layer mask to all of these flowers. So you need to make sure, and this is the time to commit. So I'm going to, with the extra flowers layer active, merge down by hitting Control E and click on the apply. What I've got here now is the applied layer mask with the addition of the extra flowers on top. And then what I did was I went in and I created a layer mask. 
and I've done that in advance, and this is the result. I control clicked on this layer to create a selection around all of these opaque pixels. I then went in and went to select, modify, expand, and expanded my selection out by approximately 10 pixels, and then I filled that selection on a new layer with a darker green that I sampled from the background here. Okay, I'm now going to deselect, and now what I'm going to do is create a blur. Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and blur out that layer, and that looks fine, and I will lower the opacity a bit, and that looks, uh, again, you can play with this. Now what I'll do for extra emphasis for a truer shadow is I will double click on the flowers layer to access the layer styles dialog box and I'm going to go to the drop shadow option and I will select the drop shadow name to access the settings for the drop shadow so we'll leave that at that I'll hit OK and I think that is quite readable I think that will suffice for what we wanted to achieve I will then add a little bit of spice by bringing in some insects that I've, that I've downloaded from Google and I'm going to copy and paste those into my document, the butterfly and the bee. Okay, so each came in on its own layer and remove the white. I'm simply going to go to my magic wand tool and at 22 tolerance I'm going to select the white and hit delete. Select this and delete that. Okay, and now with my butterfly layer active, I'll sample, I'll do the same thing there and delete the background. We'll leave that as is. Okay, so now what we have is <coughs> a B here that I will drag over here, keep this in position, and take my butterfly, scale that down. I've got my B here, and what I'm going to do is duplicate the bumblebee. The, I'm going to go to filter blur motion blur and I'm going to create the illusion that this bumblebee is flying and in motion and I just want to get the correct angle the distance is important also and I'll hit OK and now what I'll do is create a layer mask black is my foreground color and I'm going to mask out the front portion of the bee so that the blur motion is behind them. And then what I'll do is create a drop shadow. I'm going to duplicate this B a few times here, and I'm going to scale them down to give uh, the extra illusion of depth. And now what I'll do is this. I'm going to a apply a drop shadow. Okay, so drop shadow, let me bring this up here. Uh, I'm going to change the default blend mode from multiply to overlay so it retains the texture underneath and I'll hit OK. Now what I'm going to do is take the layer style and copy that layer style to each of the insect layers. So I'm going to right click on the FX icon and select copy layer style and go into the a layer above which is one of the insect layers and I'm going to right click and paste the layer style and I'll do that for each of the insect layers okay so this gives us additional control so if I want to give the illusion that this bee is closer to the surface I can go into that that particular layer style and adapt that to that individual layer and that should suffice now keep in mind also that what we're going to do is with this particular layer style in overlay mode the drop shadow will not affect the flowers so you may want to go back and bring that back to multiply mode to give the illusion that the butterfly shadow is on top of the flowers themselves. Alright so hope you gained some knowledge from this and hope to see you guys soon.